Hey, I'm Brendan Moran. And I'm Ruby Lopez, and welcome to Create Currents. This month, I visit the dedication of the Centennial Grove. Plus, find out why the Bedford Gallery's new exhibit is all about envy and the internet. But first up, I try something new in the open space that already has me hooked. I'm here today at Old Gorgeous Ranch and I am going to learn how to blacksmith. So, what do you say? We'll go make some sparks fly. Come on. Well, I'm here with Ranger Bruce Weideman now, so thank you for having me. You're very welcome. And we're here for your blacksmithing workshop, so what can I expect today? So we offer this to the public. It gives them a chance to get, to get in a forge okay. and make something by hand that they're going to be proud of forever because iron's going to last forever going to outlive them, but yeah. I don't tell them that. <laughs> and so uh, maybe 15 minutes, they'll come in, take a straight piece of iron, and forge it into a hook. Very cool. You can cool. use it for plants, bicycles, whatever. OK, that's what I'm going to be making today as You'll well. You'll be making a hook, yep. OK, great. Now, the space here is beautiful. Tell us about uh, Borges Ranch and the uh, history behind it. Well, we're up at Borges Ranch, mm -hmm. and uh, it's part of the Shell Ridge Open Space. Mm -hmm. And Borges Ranch was established, or, or first built in like 1899, and the old Borges family built a second house. And mm -hmm. basically, what we have here is is remnants of what the family used it left us for the, mm -hmm. the city of Water Creek. Um, there are animals here. There's a historic house, hay barns, blacksmith shop, uh, milk barn, stuff like that. Oh wow! And that's in the center of Shell Ridge. Okay. And so there's 1,400 acres of hiking that people can go from this spot. Grace, lots Mount of activities. Mountain lions. Uh, bobcats, coyotes, rattlesnakes. Oh my. Oh, oh my, yes. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, great. So then, should we get started with uh, making the hook? I think we should. And, okay. and you've got a lot of black on, so you're all ready to go. We okay. won't see the dust on you. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm thinking I'm going to oh, need one okay. of those aprons. Okay. 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 Right. Let's get started. Okay. All right. I'm here with Ranger Bruce Weideman now, and you are going to teach me how to do this blacksmithing. Uh, I it's am, a little bit yes. intimidating. Yes. Oh, it's not intimidating okay. at all. No. It's okay. just hot. Okay. Very hot. <laughs> okay, so what's the process? You wanna walk me through it? Yes, okay. So we've got a couple of things going on here. We've got a lot of hot coal in the fire pot. Okay. We've got a fan here you're gonna turn, blow into the fire pot and make it much hotter. Then you got this piece of iron you're gonna stick into the fire pot to heat it up. Okay. Then you're gonna take the hot iron, hot iron out and bang it on the anvil. All right. Simple as that. Okay. Yeah. So give it a whirl easy. then. Let's, let's give it a try. So give this a crank first, right? I think it's red enough. Okay. Pull it out. Okay. Switch hands. Are you left right-handed? Right-handed. Right -handed. And just pull it back so okay. only the one inch is on that anvil. Okay. And hit just that last inch. Okay, now give it a quarter rotation. Hit that three times. Whoop. Don't miss it. Well, it doesn't doing good. Seem, it, is it? The is slow that process, making... but you can see it's tapering. Okay. And then as you get it tapered, 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 then we'll How do many a little trick with it. How many times does it usually take? How many uh, cycles? I'd probably this? say about three more times, four more times. All right. Okay, that's good. Okay, just stick that on the on the on the forge there. There we go. And now you're going to make a reverse curl. So you're gonna go like yeah. this. You're gonna pull this out. Okay. Stick it in here. Go like device. this. Then you're gonna rotate it in just one little spot like this. Oh wow. And just keep working this. And that didn't take very much force. No, no. Then you can uh, kind of straighten it out like this if you want. Get it all straight. You can use your vice as many times as you need to. There you go. So now you got a reverse loop. Wow. Then you're going to heat it up again and bend it backwards so your hook kind of looks oh, like that. Oh, yeah, okay. All right, so you ready to go ahead and stick it in there and okay. we'll do that first curl. Fire it up. Let's see what it looks like. Okay. Good, okay. Stick her in there. Certain direction? Yep. Like this? Yep. Okay, now do a, do a backwards curl. Okay, start lower? Yeah. And slide your pliers up a little bit more. Keep turning. Yeah. Keep turning. Keep turning. Keep turning. Yes. Here. <laughs> I've Here's got this. no more strength. Yeah. Oh, okay. Bring out the big guns. Okay. Yeah. There we go. All right. Oh, Good. yeah. Okay. What do you think? Good. 
Now, take this off okay. and take it over to the anvil and flatten it. Okay, go ahead and crunch it. And this cool, oh, this cools it off completely? It will. Okay, we're almost Thoroughly done. Impressed. Now we're gonna okay. make a spot where we can drill a hole. But we're gonna cut this off first. <laughs> oh You're going God. for a record. You're going for a record. Oh, Yay. got it. So then go ahead and drill a hole in it. Very nice job. Okay, well, Ranger Bruce, thank you so much. Yeah, Ruby, you're very welcome. And every hook has its character. Oh, yeah. yeah look at that. What do you think? How, what kind of a job did I, I do I, here? Your, your, your curl here is really, really nice. And uh, your spot up here looks something like Tim Burton. <laughs> I like that. It, it, I like that. It has character. It does. All right. Oh God, it's sweet. Ranger Bruce, thank you so much. Ranger, I appreciate all right. it. You're thank you. Welcome. Well, I had a great time here today learning how to blacksmith at Old Borges Ranch. And I made this beauty right here. Now, if you'd like some more information on Walnut Creek's open space, just visit their website. I'm going to go hang up this hook. Now, if you'd like to help the open space by planting native grasses or wildflowers, you can join the Open Space Foundation every weekend for a restoration project. Just visit their website for more information. Another great way to spend your weekend is by checking out the Bedford Gallery. And right now you can see the exhibit that's got the internet buzzing. I write an art blog called The Jealous Curator and it's a contemporary art site. Basically I write one blog post every day about a contemporary artist that I love, why I love them, and a link back to their site. I have a background in art, I have a Bachelor of Fine Arts, and um, once the internet came along, it's, it's a bit intimidating. There are so many artists that you find online to the point where it wasn't inspiring, it was crushing because there was just so many of them and they did so many beautiful things. And So I, I decided to turn this sort of toxic jealousy that was eating me alive into admiration instead. And um, I just started writing a daily post every day about artists that I love. and. That's the Jealous Curator. I never had any intention of having readers or a community. This was solely for myself. Just a way to catalog all of the work that I really, really loved. It was amazing. Within a few posts, within a few months, I was starting to feel so much better and suddenly I had an audience. It's very narcissistic of me, but I really thought I was the only one that felt alone and blocked and had an inner critic and I guess the wording the jealous curator it just resonated with a lot of people and a lot I now know six years later that so many creative people feel exactly the same way so I just all of a sudden very quickly without really trying had this amazing like-minded community growing around me I was approached by Chronicle Books, they, they followed my blog for a while and they asked if I would like to be an author and I said yes I would. For the book, I reached out to 50 artists from around the world, um, all different disciplines, small town, big city, and asked them how they deal with blocks and inner critics and self-doubt and the book is their answers. The Bedford Gallery reached out to me and said that they would like me to curate a show. Anything that I liked, what would I like to do? And I really wanted to bring the book to life. And so I worked with their director and that's what we've done. It's really cool. It's like standing in the middle of my book. <laughs> there are all sorts of things in this show. I wanted to make sure that there was a good representation of photography and painting, mixed media, sculpture, collage. And all of it has a very contemporary feel. It's got a really bright, fun palette, too. One of my favorites is Stephanie Vovas. She is a photographer from LA, and she normally shoots very sort of vampy 1960s B-movie type of work. And she's just started working with um, children. She's never done that before, and so I'm thrilled to have those pieces in the show. Lisa Congdon is another artist who I love. She's actually from Oakland. What I love about Lisa's work is her color palette. There's always a hit of neon pink in there, and I really like the combination of her pencil drawings with the very geometric collage. And so I think that's why I love her mixed media pieces so much, because they truly are mixed media. There's a painter in the show named Lisa Golightly. She's from Portland, and she does these very dreamy, almost impressionistic photos from days gone by. So the idea behind them is that there's faded childhood memories 
And so it instantly, it does take you back to like being little at the beach and when you look at her work, you can almost smell the, the summer air. They're amazing. Uh, I'm no longer jealous, I figured out, I understand now that there is a place for everyone that wants to create, including me, and uh, some of my work is even in the show as well, which I didn't want to put in, but they, they pushed me and I did it. Um, and so, yeah, coming to see it in a book and now in an exhibition is just beyond thrilling to me. Now, if you're interested in the Jealous Curator's tips for blogging, then don't miss her Blogging 101 talk currently on our YouTube channel. You know, Ruby, the Bedford is not the only place to see new great art when it's in town. In fact, I just went to a dedication for a new monument that has a lot of meaning for Walnut Creek. I'm here at Heather Farm Park for the dedication of the city's brand new Centennial Grove. Mayor Bob Simmons, who had a lot to do with today's Centennial Grove. And this is kind of the, the last event for the city of Walnut Creek's Centennial Year, is that right? That is correct. This is very definitely the last event. We had a great year celebrating all the things that made us what we are today and how we evolved and developed as a community. This to me was a, a, the best way and a special way to be the final centennial event because when you plant a tree you're really speaking to the future and the kids that helped us plant tree, trees today and we're here your kids as well they will have the chance to truly enjoy this grove I can imagine it I'm gonna enjoy it myself as well but this is really for the future generations and the community had a lot to do with this in the form of financing it helping with donations and they're all represented on our new rock right the, you're absolutely correct. We have uh, what, we, what we call our, uh, the Centennial Rock. Mm -hmm. I think people may in the future say, well, I'll just meet you at the Centennial Rock and they'll know what that is. But that rock has the name of every person or organization that contributed in one form or another uh, to the creation of this wonderful growth. It looks great. Thank you. It look, thank you. It does look great. There's a lot of uh, good work put into this, both in terms of the planning uh, by a, a number of different people. Uh, some considerable discussions over what kind of trees to put into the grove and then of course the city of, of Walnut Creek Park personnel actually did all the hard work of planting the trees. You didn't get on your hands and knees and get in the mud yourself? Actually I did but not with regard to these. I did with regard to creating the three sites for the, 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 green, the kids green committee from Seven Hills School planted some acorns today. We had to prepare those sites a couple days in advance and and yes, I had some dirty pants. I'm here with Ron Brown from Save Mount Diablo, who is one of the people responsible for the Centennial Grove. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Sure, I've been participating as a member of the city's Centennial Grove Committee to plan the uh, variety of events that have taken place in this past year. Um, the project that I uh, specifically got involved in was the planting of this uh, Centennial Grove. We're at Heather Farm Park and there's trees all up around here behind us. Uh, am I correct in assuming that there are a hundred of them? That would be a great guess. Uh, we wanted to have a hundred trees here, some of the existing trees, in addition to about 78 new trees planted in celebration of Walnut Creek's 100th anniversary. The trees that we planted here are from uh, five different continents uh, around the world to represent the variety and diversity of the people who have moved to Walnut Creek uh, over these last hundred years and have made Walnut Creek such a vibrant and diverse community. Name a couple of the trees that are here. I'll put you on the spot. <laughs> well, certainly we have some native oak trees and we have some uh, Asian uh, cherry trees uh, and there's some trees from Africa. So there's quite a few different varieties here. Each of the trees has a little identifying tag on it of which tree it is and where it's from. 
You know, uh, there's an oft-quoted phrase about how um, life is like planting a tree and not expecting to see or uh, be able to sit in the shade of said tree. Do you believe that? Um, absolutely. I think that, uh, you know, I feel a great sense of pride today that I'm uh, part of this group that's been able to plant these trees here that just stand about this high today, um, for which I'll never be able to sit in the shade of, but that they're going to be here for future generations to sit under and enjoy. here with London who also planted an acorn today. Can you tell me about it? What'd you do? Um, so we planted an acorn in a screen and then we covered it up with dirt and then the screen was closed so that no animals could eat the acorns. That's smart because it's going to take a long time to grow into a tree, don't you think? Yeah. How long would you say? Um, um, maybe about probably 10 years. That's a fair guess. So you're with uh, your school's green program, right? Yeah. Tell me about that. So uh, every Tuesday and Wednesday we meet for lunch and we talk about ways that we can help our school and our environment be cleaner and greener. Thank you, London. I look forward to seeing your tree one day. Well, it's been a great year for Walnut Creek's centennial celebration, and we want to thank everybody for making it happen. Now, if you want to see the centennial grow for yourself, don't forget that Heather Farm also has a dog park, a skate park, and the All Abilities Playground. And we'll see you next time on Creek Currents.